Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about Cisco Secure X and third party integrations, specifically going over an introduction to relay modules, which is one of the ways we can make that happen. We're going to start with a very brief SecureX threat response overview to show where and how relay modules are useful. We're going to talk about modules as a general concept, specifically then going to describe relay modules and how they differ from regular modules. We're going to talk about how they're deployed and we're going to go through some next steps you can take and some resources you can use to get relay modules working for your own SecureX account. So let's get into it with that threat response overview. SecureX in general makes your teams more efficient by combining capabilities from multiple products and sources. SecureX Threat Response specifically expedites threat hunting and incident investigation. These processes traditionally involve security operators collecting information from potentially dozens of different technologies to discover, explore, and understand a threat situation, and then again dealing with many different products and technologies to remediate and defend against it. SecureX Threat Response greatly simplifies this process, speeds it up, and reduces adversary dwell time by bringing together multiple sources of global threat intelligence, local visibility and context and response capabilities all into one workspace. But how does this all work? Modules. SecureX Threat Response is essentially an API aggregator. Each API is handled by a module, some for data, external data, local data, some for control, and some of course handle two or even all three of these possible functions. The modules are what use all of these APIs of the external products so that you don't have to. To revisit our previous diagram, each of these modules relays the queries from SecureX to the external product or service that hosts the information. Each of these products and services has their own API, their own data model, and so on, and the module translates between the two, acting as a proxy or a relay. This is code that runs in the SecureX infrastructure and is written and maintained by SecureX engineering, typically leveraging Cisco technologies. But many teams use information sources or technologies for which there aren't modules in SecureX. But what if these modules didn't have to be in SecureX? And that's where relay modules come in. Relay modules involve SecureX talking to a relay service. That relay service translates from the third-party data model and the third-party APIs to Cisco Threat Intelligence model and SecureX APIs, and vice versa, back and forth, relaying or proxying these requests between SecureX and between these arbitrary third-party things you might want to bring into your SecureX capability set. But how do you get them? Well, you can download a number of them from GitHub. You can also write your own using the template that's on GitHub. We've got the list that I'm not going to read of what's currently supported for relay modules that you can download from GitHub and deploy and immediately have access to the services and the intelligence from the listed products and tools here. Let's go back to our diagram. And so now we've added two arbitrary third-party technologies, and we're going to do the same enrichment step. We're just looking at the enrichment step, but relay modules can provide all of the functionality of any other module, including providing reference pivots, dashboard tiles, and even response actions. Now these relays can be hosted in the cloud or in your own DMZ, or in the infrastructure of the third party vendor or provider. It doesn't really matter. It just needs to be somewhere that's network accessible so that SecureX can reach it, and it needs to have access to the product or service you're talking to on the other side. So let's go over an overview of the deployment of the relay modules as hosted in GitHub. Now in the examples available from Cisco Security on GitHub, they are hosted in the cloud, AWS to be specific. AWS Lambda to be even more specific. The download you get from GitHub will need to be executed somewhere. It can be your local machine, it can be in the cloud, it doesn't matter. It needs to be able to access AWS and it needs to be able to run Python and potentially install a couple of modules. Download the package from GitHub, perform some AWS configuration and then some local package configuration based on your AWS setup and then execute it. The code is a packaged launcher that deploys the included relay API in AWS Lambda. The main installation steps are as follows. Download the code from GitHub, 
configure your AWS environment if you haven't done that already. You only need to do this one time. So the first time you install a relay module, you will need to configure AWS. Every other time, you can just use that same AWS configuration. You then prepare the Python environment. Again, this is a one-time operation. You edit some local configuration files for every relay module you're going to install. You then run the deployment code to launch that API up into AWS Lambda, and then you configure some module settings in SecureX. That's the list of steps. And we're going to have configuration guides and we're going to have configuration videos walking you through each of those steps. And so what are your next steps and what are some resources that you can use? Well, let's start by talking about some of the technologies that are used in this process. We've got GitHub, which of course is where you get the code. It's where we're managing the code and where we're hosting it. You use AWS Lambda, Amazon Web Services, serverless cloud architecture. We're using Python as the language in which the relays are written. We're using Flask, a web application micro framework, and we're using Zappa to deploy this web app into AWS Lambda. And for each of these, we have some references here. You don't need to be an expert in any of those technologies. The specific things that you need to know are very well laid out in the documentation and in the user guides. But if you want to learn more about any of these, there are references available and resources that you can use to do so right here. Your next steps to get started and learn more about Relay Modules in SecureX are to review the installation guide. To watch and save this tutorial's playlist, we're going to be adding more materials as time goes on. You can browse the relays that are currently available at GitHub from Cisco Security at the link shown. And then you can start downloading and launching the relays for those technologies that you wish to use with SecureX. Relay modules greatly expand the capabilities of SecureX by opening the door to the world of third-party integrations. I encourage you to explore the available options and maximize the potential of your usage of SecureX by leveraging free, open source intelligence and other products and services you may already have in your environment. Thank you very much. Thank you for your interest in SecureX, and we'll talk again soon.